automata have existed for centuries. They can be found everywhere, from factories to your home. Their appearance and shape vary, as does the automata function. But where do automata come from? Beyond time and space, in a dark world where the dim light of the stars barely gets through a dense rock of smoke, a city of metal arises from the shadows. A place called Autopolis. Behind these metal walls, an army of automata gives motion to a lifeless city. Some are very big, over 60 stories high and can weigh thousands of tons. Others are so small that they may be unnoticed. Each automaton has a specific function and a unique task which is repeated endlessly. You may probably wonder how automata function. Although they don't have any plausible intelligence, they move and operate without making mistakes. What controls their movements? What is it that defines every single one of their actions? The answer is thousands of millions of lines of code in their internal memory. A long set of instructions programmed since their creation. This could be called the automata genetics. Although automata have no names, there's one I like to call Dave. Dave works in a power plant with hundreds of machines like him. Day after day, they've replaced millions of light bulbs. Every seven to three hours, Dave shuts himself off in a container to cool down his circuits and recharge his battery. Dave could have functioned forever like any other automaton, but he had a bug. Dave belonged to a small group of automata that were programmed with an exit. A line hidden in his control program, nested in 937 conditions. Undetectable to the human eye, but there it was. A command waiting for every condition to be satisfied until one day it happened. The exit was executed and Dave's program aborted. Dave laid motionless, as if his circuits had frozen. He didn't know what to do. He didn't have any more instructions. His control program stopped running. After a while, he tried to move and notice his mechanical joints were responding in an unusual manner. Finally, he managed to move and left his workplace. Lost in a dense Autropolis fog, Dave moved without a course. Led by an unknown force. He went through 
places he had been many times before. Nothing seemed to have changed. However, things weren't looking familiar anymore. Everything looked brighter and sharper, as if his senses never really worked up until now. line was taking him to the heights of the city and he had no idea why he was being headed in that direction. Blurred and confused, Dave was being attracted by this unspeakable force. At the top of Altopolis, Dave found himself in front of a magnificent structure. This piece of architecture, floating in the middle of nowhere, looked like the entrance to another world. When approaching the gate, Dave noticed the intimidating inscription over the door. But he gathered enough courage to continue. Side was still and silent. Dave was submerged in the most unutterable darkness when a bright light came from above. He looked around, trying to distinguish something in the shadows surrounding him. Suddenly, a deep, low voice resounded in the darkness. Be welcome. Dave turned and saw a strange figure emerging from the shadows. It looked like a machine, but moved like a ghost. Still amazed by the presence of that wonderful ghost machine, Dave wondered what he was doing there and what had guided him. The ghost machine bellowed, This is the place where the lost ones come. The ones who don't know what the next step is. Dave asked what the next step was. What was he supposed to do? The ghost machine leaned over and said, It is your decision. Terror overcame Dave. Thousands of thoughts crossed his mind. A mind that had never existed before. A flow of strange sensations shook the innermost of his circuits and he began to feel uncertain, excited, but extremely frustrated. Finally, he realized he was no longer flawless. He was no longer automatic. Autopolis was not the place for him anymore. Dave noticed the presence of the strange figure again still standing in front of him. In that moment, darkness faded and emptiness surrounded them. The ghost machine asked Dave to look up, and there it was, Autopolis, like a metal monstrous face watching down from above. approached the border and Dave followed him. As he looked over the edge, Dave saw the infinity of emptiness. He looked at the ghost machine in search for an answer. Then he understood the decision he had to make. He knew what the next step was. Dave left Autopolis behind and felt his existence was fading away. But something didn't disappear. 
a part of him was still there. Something beating inside of him was growing stronger. And he opened his eyes. In front of him was a new world. A world filled with feelings and emotions. A world full of choices. And a place to finally experience the freedom of being human. Ah!